Welcome to another tutorial brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to track salary history. Now, a lot of people ask me, how do you take a list of employees in your database, if you have an employee table, for example, and you want to be able to track their salary history. In other words, on January 1st, 2001, they had this much of a salary. In 2005, they got a raise to this. And you want to be able to track all of those changes to their salary, but you also want to be able to calculate what their current salary is. So that's what we're going to learn in today's tutorial. So here I've got a pretty basic access database that I set up, which has an employee table, which is simply employee name, first name, last name, address, city, state, and zip, and so on, with an employee ID, of course. Here's a basic employee form that's based on that table. This is all beginner stuff, which I cover in my beginner level one lesson. And here we have a salary table. Now, the salary table is joined to the employee table based on employee ID. Now, if you don't know how to do this, if you, if you aren't familiar with relationships, then go and watch my videos on access relationships. I've got a few free videos on my website, and I also cover this in my Access Expert One class. So if you don't know how to do relationships, go learn that first. All right, but the employee ID is what joins these two tables together. So the salary ID is our primary key for this table, right? One, two, three, four, five, that's an auto number. Employee ID is what links it back so we know which employee it is, right? We have employee one and employee two. So this is the salary history here for employee one, okay? Employee one on January 1st, 2016, his salary was set to 40,000. January 1st, 2017, he was set to 42,000. That's employee one. Now, employee two is the next set of records, okay? 80,000, 89,000, and then 95,000. And here are the dates accordingly that his salary was set. Now, it would be very simple to simply create a subform in here in the employee form to show this person's salary, for example. That's easy to do. Again, I've got a million other videos to show that. What I want to be able to do is I want to be able to see their current salary, okay? I can very easily go into a subform and just edit this information, all right? But for reporting purposes, I might want to know what is his current salary. So to do that, we're going to do a little trick inside of a query using what's called the max function. So we're going to need two queries for this, all right? So create, query design. For this one, bring in your employee table and your salary table. You'll see the join line automatically sets up there. I can close that. So bring in whichever fields you want to see from the employee table. For now, let's just keep it simple. Let's go with employee ID. We need that. First name, last name, and that's good for now. Just for the, the simple example for class here. Now, from the salary table, I want to know what his current salary is. So it's going to be based on the start date, and I want the largest one. So bring in start date. We'll bring in amount later in the next query. Don't worry about that for now. All right, now come up here to the top. And on the Query Tools Design tab, find this Totals button here. Click on that. And you'll see a new row shows up down here. Group by group by group by. See that? Well, this says just bring all of these guys in, group them together. So group, for example, uh, first name and last name will be grouped together. So all of, you know, all of the Richard Ross will be grouped together. All the Joe Smiths will be grouped together. In other words, each employee will be grouped together. But start date, I don't want them all grouped together. I want to see the largest one. So drop this down and pick Max. That says these guys will all be unique, but I want to see the maximum start date for each of these guys. Okay? Let's see what that looks like when we run it. Now look at that. These are all the same, so they get grouped together. That's what group by means, right? For each unique individual employee, for example, you will see one record. Now, this turns into max of start date. In other words, the largest start date in the salary table for each of these guys. And you'll just see one of them. Now, save this query. I'm going to control S and save it. Let's just call this uh, salary Q1. Okay. Close that. Now we need a second query so we can bring the other information in that we need. Because unfortunately, our, our group by query has to be very simple at this point. But you can do more with it once you've got this information already set. So, right? this, is a, this is all set. Now we've got the employee and the max start date of his last salary change. Now, knowing these two things, we can very easily pull up the other information. So let's create another query. So create, query design. This time, I want to go to the queries tab 
and bring in the salary Q1. And what other supporting information I need is going to come from the salary T. Yeah, you can bring in other stuff from employee T if you want to. If you want to bring in the address and all that stuff at this point, you can. But I'll just bring in the salary table. Now notice, since these were not based on a table, there's no automatic join line. So we're going to make our own join lines here. So what information links these together? Well, the employee ID over here, I'm going to click and drag and drop it on the employee ID on this side. But more importantly, this max of start date also links up to the start date over here. Now, once I make that join, these two tables will be synced. So I'm only going to see records where the employee ID matches the employee ID and this max of start date field matches this start date. So now I can say, show me, well, show me all the fields from over here if you want, okay? And then show me the amount, and that will give you the salary for this record because these records are now joined together. And if you run this, there's the data that you want, right? Max of start date was determined in the previous query, and the amount was brought in from the salary table because of our join. And I can save this now as salary two, or Q2. And now that you have this information, you can add what other fields you want in here, and you can put this information right back on the form if you want to, right? Just bring it up here. Change the record source of this form to your new query that now has all of the employee information in it and the salary amount, if you want to. Now, sometimes complicated queries like this do not make for an editable record set. Sometimes you can't go in here and, and edit this form once you do some complicated things in here with calculations. So there's another function you can use called dmax, where you can actually look that up right in the table without having to go through using queries. It's a little more complicated of an example, but if you look on my website, there is a lesson for DMAX. I'll put a link to it in the description below this video. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Now you know about salary history, which by the way, that kind of query is called an aggregate query. That little thing we do with DMAX, there's lots more you can do with that. And I've got separate lessons on, on all the different functions. You can create sums, you can do maxes, mins, all that kind of stuff with aggregate queries. And I've got different lessons on the dmax function, which you can use to put the total directly in a form. And there's also something called dlookup, which is very powerful as well. And again, there's free lessons for all of this on my website. So I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, visit my channel page. And of course, if you want to learn access from the ground up, visit my website, accesslearningzone.com. You can watch level one for free, which is also on YouTube. Three hours of beginner lessons, completely free. And if you, want, if you like that, level two is just $1. So thanks, and I hope you enjoyed.